One of the things that is really important is, by the way, this is two lessons in one. It's like a bonus. It's going to be about warm up and about push and pull. So I have watched countless times where trainers will get a dog out of the truck or out of their car, walk them up to the line, shoot a test and send their dog and they go from cold to blazing fast. Sit. There is no sport where athletes do that. If you go to a football game, they're out there an hour ahead of time. Track meet, hour ahead of time. Tennis matches, you name a sport, horse racing, dog racing, anything, there's always warm up and cool down. The cool down is easy. You just walk them around until they're cooled down. But sometimes you, you're, you're in a, a situation where you've got cars and people around and you really can't go off and do a nice warm up. So what do you do? Um, this is what I do. And it's, it's pretty simple. It's basically a healing exercise, but I think it makes a good at least a partial warm-up when you're stuck. So just do a little forward and backward healing. Heel, sit, heel, good, heel, heel, good, heel, good, sit, heel, sit, heel, sit, heel, sit. Heel. sit. Heel, sit, attaboy, good, good, attaboy, sit, heel, sit, heel, sit, heel, sit, heel, sit, heel, very good, sit, fetch, sit, heel, sit, heel, sit, sit, so, I think that's a good example of some moving and twisting and forward and back and it's something you can do in a very small space. If you have more time and more space, then you should do a little more. It is not a good idea to get a dog out of a vehicle and go up to line and run them. There's so many injuries that take place just because of that one detail and it shows to me a great disrespect for the dogs to do that to them especially when it's cold and they've been kind of laying in a cramped up dog truck or a crate or something and they come out and wang there they go so be real careful about that the other thing i want to here come on uh talk about shadow come here is many years ago, I went to a seminar out in California. It was put on by John Folsom. And John had been working for Rex Carr. And one of the topics in the seminar was push and pull. And I can tell you, I was fascinated by it because he had a, a yellow lab there were two blinds out, sit, a long one and a short one, and they were very close together. And he could tell the dog to sit and get in his position, and by the use of push and pull, get either of those blinds without moving the dog's head just by using push and pull. So what the reason I'm mentioning this now is because I recently saw somebody that told me they were using push and pull and they were patting their side. They were actually getting the dog to move his head slight amounts and they were thinking that was pushing and pull, but it is not. That is I don't know what you call that. That's just the type of lining. Push and pull is when the dog's head is looking somewhere and doesn't move. 
and you adjust yourself slightly either forward or back. So if the dog is looking straight ahead and you back up just a little bit, so you'd say, where's the bird? Sit right there. And you move just a little bit and the dog stays there even though he's looking straight out. That is pulling. Your, the, the, the tendency of the dog is to fade to the right. Conversely, if you move up just a little bit like this, just scooch up just a little bit, that's push. You're pushing him and the dog will fade that way. So you can, now I, it's not fading, but it's just a slight pushing this way or a slight pulling this way. He'll, now if you have a two-sided dog, he'll sit. Then it's the opposite. So if, if he's here and I want to push just a little bit, I'm going to move like that, sit. I'm going to move just a little bit. And if I want to pull, if I'm, this is my position, then, where's the bird? I'm going to inch deck just a little bit like this. Could be only two or three inches, but it's just the, the feeling a dog gets when he feels you move either back or forward. With this dog, I can push and pull almost without moving my feet. If I lean a little more forward, it's pushing. If I lean a little more backward, it's pulling. And the more you practice, like for instance, if you go back and look at my Helter Skelter lining drill where there's, there's bumpers everywhere and you wanna get really, really precise on exactly which initial line a dog takes, if you keep practicing that, you'll find yourself feeling where the dog is going and whether he needs a little pull or a little push. And I've had people tell me, oh, you're, you're not moving except just a little bit forward or a little bit backward. And the smoother you get with this the, and the more connected to your dog you become, the easier it is to get these slight variations in line without moving your hand or saying here or doing anything it's just a it's just a little influence the way to practice it is by lining drills where you have let's say you have two piles that are very close together where you can't really make a variation by where the dog is looking he's looking in the same place but if you back up just a little he gets the left one if you push forward a little bit he gets the right one if you practice this enough, you'll be so proud of yourself because you will be able to, to fine line a dog so accurately that the other dogs won't, they'll be very jealous of you because it's almost miraculous how, it, how beautifully it works if you've practiced. It doesn't work just because you did it a time. It would even work then, but not with such precision. So my, uh, I guess what I would say is go back on the blog a few times, I don't know how far back, and look up Helter Skelter Drill and apply push and pull to which one of these extravaganza bumpers everywhere. Uh, sometimes I'll have birds, bumpers, dock and ducks, everything. As long as they're visible, you can practice lining and you can practice push and pull. So hang on, I've got one more message for you coming up. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm.